Lesson number 56, angles and circles and proofs. I need you guys to give me your attention. I'm starting. I know it's more exciting to talk about guns and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, one of the things that we've done up to this point, we've talked about <coughs> a central angle. That when I give you a central angle, you know that this and this are the same measurement. If one is 70 degrees, the other one is 70 degrees, okay? Um, <clears throat> we've also talked about if we have this, and this is 60 degrees. That's 30. Thank you, Riley. That's 30. It's half. Now, it's only if the vertex is on the circle. It's going to be half what the uh, arc is. Does it have to be centered like that? Does that make any sense? It doesn't matter. If I have um, this here, all of these are 30 degree angles because the subtended arc is what that's called is 60. So even if I do this, those are all 30 degree angles because they share the same arc here. Okay? This is really important stuff for the SAT. They will throw things like this on the SAT. I mean, that, this is easy. You probably won't see it on the SAT. They'll get into some more that are more difficult, which we're going to get into today. Yes. Okay. Another thing that we're going to do is go over a little bit of vocabulary with you. And I'm assuming that you're going to uh, remember this vocabulary so that when you see it on a test or you hear me talk about it, you're not like, what the heck is he talking about? All right, so. I've got a line segment there on top of my circle. That line segment. In fact, the definition is, if a line intersects a circle, if a line intersects a circle in two places, can a line intersect a circle in more than two places? No. In less than two places? Mm, yeah. Well, yeah. Because a line goes on to infinity in both directions. So if it's going through the circle, it's got to come out the circle. Okay? If a line intersects a circle in two places, it's called... Wait, doesn't a tangent only intersect in one? It's called a secant. It intersects the circle. Um, I guess what I'm talking about, Adam, is going through the circle. Yeah, because that was my next thing, was going into tangent. But, yeah. You were going to go off on a tangent. I was going to go off on a tangent with the secant. Okay, so. The part of the secant inside the circle is called the chord. Now, we have some, we have a specific name for one type of chord, and that is if the chord goes through the center point of the circle, it's called what? Diameter. There we go, diameter. So a diameter is a chord, it's just a special chord. It's a special chord. Okay. If the line, or if a line touches the circle at one point, Okay, so this is what Adam was talking about. At one point, this is called a tangent line. And the place that it touches the circle is got two, two names, basically, they're just interchangeable words. A tangent point or a point of tangency. Okay, either one of those. Either one of those work. Now this is... Uh, an interesting idea about that point of tangency is if we were to draw a radius from the center of that circle to that point of tangency, its tangent is always a 90 degree angle or a perpendicular line segment. So the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent line that they share a point with on the circle. 
Okay? So that's an important thing to remember. But Let's see. Ow. What? What? Okay, fine. <laughs> Because okay. if you added the two 90s together, it would be 180, but how could it be 180 because it's not a straight line? Uh -huh. <laughs> what about 180? Never mind. <laughs> okay, I like the never mind question. If I just play dumb long enough, then you'll just say, never mind. Okay, so here's where it gets a little tricky. For me, anyway, you guys are really smart and probably get it a lot easier. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. Okay. Double chord. Double chord in your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's say that this is 40 degrees, and this is 80 degrees, and this is X, which means this one's going to be Y. You. A duck. <laughs> a, a duck? A small rock. A Y. <laughs> Why is it X? Because those two angles are equal. They're the same. So you have to call it the same letter. Okay? Wait, but how? Maths <laughs> I get it. So like if this one's 30 degrees, this one's 30 degrees. They're the same number. Okay? So we use the same letter. So how do we find out what x is? That's the hard part because we don't know yes. if that intersection here is in the middle of the circle or not. So you can only assume that it's not. If not. Okay, thank you, Madison. Because if it was, then the x would equal 80 and 40, but it can't be. Exactly. That's how you know it's not in the middle is because these would be the same Way to go. angle. You're so smart. Good job, Fred. Okay. <laughs> so here's the rule. My x equals 40 plus 80 divided by 2. So, the measure of x, the interior circle or line segment or angles in there, equals half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. These are the intercepted arcs right here and right here. So you add them together, divide by two, and you get your x. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, let's do another one with circles. Wait, but what is it equal to? 60. Yes! <laughs> my circle back. <laughs> yes. How if how it equal to 60 does that? Is that what it is? Uh, how, is this? how is it there? That's sixty. Um. So we said this is sixty. Yeah. So, so what are you what are you wondering? The other angle. This yeah. is sixty. Oh, why? Because they're vertical angles. Two angles, it doesn't matter what angle it is, if there's a line that crosses, the opposite ones are always the same. Okay. <coughs> okay, so, got a circle. Girls. Got a line segment. Line segment. If two line segments intersect outside the circle, <coughs> so let's say we don't know what that angle is, but let's say we know that this is 40 degrees and this is 80 degrees. Okay? We know those two um, arc lengths. X equals 80 minus 40 over 2. Okay, so notice the only difference is the plus and minus sign in the numerator. So, if the angle you're looking for is outside, you subtract. If it's inside, you add. That's the only difference between it. Outside, you subtract. Outside, you subtract. Inside, you add. That's so good. 
It is simple. It's just remembering which one's which. Are you stealing these from us? I am. Probably today. Oh, wait. It's in here. Okay, so let me give you another one. Oops. Let me get rid of this one. Let's, let's just go crazy with this. Let's do it. So there's that. <laughs> That's 100. No, I don't. Yeah, cheating. Okay. So that's the only information I'm giving you. Well, it's got to be 50. Obviously. All right, let's look at let's look at what we've got here. Is that 100 on the inside? That's 100 on the inside. Oh, if that's 100, what is the other arc? 200. 200. It's 260. Okay, so here to here is 260 because this is 100. Okay, so according to the rule that I just gave you, x is equal to the difference between those arcs, 260 minus 100, which is 160, divided by 2. So that'll give you an angle of 80 degrees. Wait, 260 minus 100? Mm-hmm. Divided by 2 then. Oh, mine is. Yeah. <coughs> Eight degrees. Okay. We go a little more crazy. I'm going to do some more. But this crazy is <laughs> blowing my brain. Let's put a triangle oh, up here. Oh. No. That's not an angle in circle? Yeah. Okay, it is. It's a triangle. There's no way to do it. Okay, so I labeled some there for you. One, two, and three. One being an exterior angle. Two and three being interior. <coughs> All right. An exterior angle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Remote means furthest away. Interior means inside so triangle. So angle one equals angle two plus angle three. That's a really, really important point. Important. Important. Did you see this? What was the word? But it also yes. angle one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 180 minus angle one equals the one that doesn't have a set number. Okay. So, you got that down? Yes. 